What Civicus does is use a very wide definition of civil society. So we really define it as that arena outside the state and the market where ordinary citizens get together to do something larger than their individual interests. And so we include not just nonprofit organizations or NGOs, but also labor movements, trade unions, faith-inspired initiatives, uh, farmers, cooperatives. It's really any space that, that people get together to pursue something larger than their own individual interests. Um, and, and the way we do this, we, we, we have, like all organizations, three pillars, have you noticed? Everybody has three pillars. Yeah, so our three pillars are uh, defending civil society rights, which really means ensuring that there is an enabling environment where civil society can exist in the first place and then express itself freely and engage in policy development. The second thing we do is help civil society share best practice with each other. Uh, particularly in the area of accountability. And the third thing we do is try and enhance civil society's capacity to influence policy. Really, Civicus, uh, civil society in the world we live in right now is facing multiple threats. Uh, we've seen now, for the last 40 years almost, a progressive narrowing of the space for dissent, for demo democratic engagement of ordinary people. And what Civicus's role really is, is to ensure that that space is protected, widened in fact. Uh, we've had, thanks to the war on terror for example, governments around the world have used it as, as an excuse to clamp down on civic, civic engagement, on, on the civil society engagement on policy. Simultaneously, of course, we've seen converging crises, climate, energy, food, on top of the problems we were dealing with earlier, poverty, uh, discrimination, uh, exclusion of various kinds. Uh, so, and the financial crisis has actually exacerbated all of that um, by first of all cutting funding for civil society, but also making it seem like the only decisions that matter are economic ones. And so if you're not you know, focused on financial sector reform, or you're not focused on implementing a bailout package, then suddenly you're just off the radar. So really it's become almost more critical in the last year and a half to find ways to ensure that civil society does in fact have its voice heard in these big global decisions that we're trying to make that affect all of us, regardless of where you live. You could be a fishing community in Bangladesh or a, an unemployed of person here in Michigan. And, and the decisions they're making right now affect all of us. We need to ensure more than ever, in a sense, that we have a voice in, in influencing those decisions. It's three ways in which Civicus does this. One is by producing what we like to believe are world-class knowledge products. So the Civil Society Index, for example, allows civil society in 60 countries currently to actually do a dipstick reading of the health of their civil society. And the report itself then becomes a way to compare across countries to see who's doing well on what and, and what they could learn from each other. But also as an advocacy tool. I mean, if you're talking to the, if you're civil society in Tunisia and you, you can use the Morocco report to say to the Tunisian government, look, why is Morocco doing a hell of a lot better than us on civil society environment. That's a fabulous advocacy tool. On the other hand, the other thing that Civicus does is convene. Uh, from the, we have, for example, a network of 57 national umbrella associations of NGOs, nonprofits, And that network uh, is one, an excellent peer learning network. So what's happening here, let's say in the US, on, on policies that affect civil society is something that the U.S. members can share with members from, from Fiji, from Europe, from countries in Africa. And so that the second sort of thing we do is peer learning networks. But also, for example, in the international advocacy NGO network, these are the big boys, you know, the Greenpeaces and Amnesties and CARES and Save the Children, is really help them develop, for example, a better accountability standard. And that's something that we're able to do through the IANGO network. 
So there's a number of different ways in which through knowledge sharing, through peer learning, and through absolute convening, that Civicus manages to fulfill its mission.